Welcome to section 9 of fungi. This is our fungi overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing Aspergillus fumigatus, which you can see right here. This scene will take place back during the time of Vietnam. However, in this story, the jungles of Vietnam will be made of asparagus. The word asparagus sounds like aspergillus, so the asparagus jungle should help you remember that this image is all about Aspergillus fumigatus. If you look closely at the asparagus, you can see that there are branches coming off of the plants at relatively acute angles. This angle resembles the shape of the letter V, which is a 45 degree angle. Also, you can see that we've shown a woman cutting down one of the plants, and there is a little indentation in the trunk. This is to make you think of septations, because it kind of resembles a septation. So together, these two ideas should help you remember that the hyphae of Aspergillus branch at 45 degree angles, or V-shaped angles, and that they have septations. This is an image of Aspergillus. Notice that there is a branch that's forming as a V-shape right here. So this is approximately 45 degrees and is referred to as an acute angle. You can also see little spores on the end of the hyphae right here. All right, if we return to the image, you can see that we've included a stray cat in the jungle. The cat is our symbol for the catalase test, and is here to help you remember that Aspergillus is catalase positive. This is a picture demonstrating the catalase test. We covered this test in more detail in the chapter on bacteria, so go check that out if you're confused. But briefly recall that the bubbles right here indicate that the organism is catalase positive. Now we've shown a helicopter going down. This is a war zone after all, so I guess this makes sense, right? Notice that the helicopter was shot and some parts fell to the ground, causing an explosion in the asparagus jungle. Now we can see debris and asparagus seeds flying all over the place. This explosion with debris flying everywhere represents invasive disease, because invasive disease spreads throughout the body, just like this explosion is spreading throughout the air. So most of the information near this explosion will be regarding invasive disease. Notice that we've shown a wounded soldier in a stretcher next to this area with seeds flying all around him. The stretcher is our symbol for a compromised immune system, so we've shown him here to help you remember that Aspergillus causes invasive disease in immunocompromised patients. If you look at his arm, you can see that someone has slapped on a $100 bill as a band-aid. This is one of our recurring symbols and should help you remember that invasive disease is seen in AIDS patients with a CD4 count less than 100. Luckily for the guy in the stretcher, this commando grandpa was nearby and is saving his life. You can see that despite being old, he's pretty shredded and is bursting open his shirt to tear off some clothing to use it as a tourniquet. Anyway, the grannies are symbol for granulomas, so we thought we'd use a variation on this symbol to represent chronic granulomatous disease. Rather than a granny, we're using a grandpa. Also, the idea of bursting his shirt should make you think of the respiratory burst, which is impaired in chronic granulomatous disease. So putting these ideas together should help you remember that invasive disease may be seen in patients with neutrophil dysfunction, such as those with chronic granulomatous disease. If we zoom up on the wounded soldier, notice that he's wearing a cancer hope ribbon on his shirt and that some blood is landing on it. Cancer and blood should make you think of leukemia. We've shown this in this image to help you remember that invasive disease may be seen in patients with leukemia. All right, now let's talk about the common presentations of invasive disease. Patients with invasive disease may present with a fever and cough. To help you remember this, we've shown a medic who was helping the injured man and holding up a lamp while simultaneously coughing. So invasive pulmonary disease presents with a fever and cough. The cough should make you think of a cough. And the lamp is a recurring symbol for a fever. So together, these ideas should help you remember that invasive pulmonary disease presents with a fever and cough. You can see that he's coughing because he was just shot in the chest by an enemy soldier. In fact, he's coughing up blood, which should make you think of hemoptysis. Also, he's holding his chest in pain because he was just shot in the chest. And this should make you think of chest pain. So invasive pulmonary disease may also present with chest pain and hemoptysis. Now we've added some signs to the image that say Vietnam this way. The signs are a symbol for sinusitis, and we've included them here to help you remember that invasive disease may present as fungal rhinosinusitis, which is similar to an infection caused by mucor and rhizopus species. Now you can see that we've added two girls wearing shawls that have the letter A on them. These girls are Vietnam spies that have infiltrated the U.S. Army. You can see that they have a sly look on them as their comrade shoots a U.S. medic. In any case, the shawl with the letter A on it is our symbol for the Azol medications. So we've included these two girls to the image to help you remember that local and invasive disease should be treated with Azols, such as voriconazole. Finally, notice that we've shown some funions on the stretcher, which is our symbol for the echinocandins. This is to help you remember that invasive disease can also be treated with echinocandins. However, these are second-lined and voriconazole should be used first. All right, let's move on. Now you can see that we've added a big crater in the ground. This must have happened after an artillery blast 
and now we can see a few things going on. First, notice that the woman chopping down the jungle just caused a big ball of asparagus to go flying, and it has landed right on this enemy soldier. The ball of asparagus represents an aspergillama, which is a fungus ball that is typically found in the lungs. Second, notice that the crater is filled with tubers, such as carrots and beets. These are a symbol for mycobacterium tuberculosis, or TB, and should make you think of a prior TB infection. Finally, the crater itself represents a cavitary lesion, so we've included each of these ideas here to help you remember that aspergillus can cause aspergillomas, which form due to fungal colonization of old lung cavities, for example following a TB infection. If we zoom up, you can see that this fungal ball smashed a bunch of red beets, and now red beet juice is flying up into the air. This juice resembles blood and should make you think of hemoptysis. So aspergillomas may cause hemoptysis. Next, notice that the enemy soldier guy is sweating. This skinny guy along with the tubers represent TB and should help you remember that secondary TB presents with weight loss and night sweats. However, the asparagus ball represents an aspergilloma and notice that it is not sweating and not skinny. How could it sweat or lose weight, right? It's just a ball. In any case, this is our way of helping you remember that secondary TB presents with night sweats and weight loss, but patients presenting with an aspergilloma will have an absence of night sweats and weight loss. Anyway, the point is that secondary TB and aspergillomas can be very similar, so it's important that you're familiar with these key differences. This is an image of an aspergilloma in a lung. You can see the fungal ball or aspergilloma right here. This is an image of how an aspergilloma may appear using imaging. This is a cross-section of the thorax. We can see the heart right here, and an aspergilloma in the lung right here. All right, let's move on. Now you can see that we've shown a helicopter off to the right. This is where the new recruits land, and you can see that an Aflac life insurance agent is waiting to try and sell all of these new soldiers' insurance. The agent even has the iconic Aflac duck next to him. In any case, Aflac sounds like aflatoxin. So this Aflac life insurance agent, along with the duck, should help you remember that some species of aspergillus produce aflatoxins. You can see the duck eating some nuts and grains in a little bowl, and we've included this here to help you remember that aflatoxins can be found in grains and nuts. This new recruit must be part of a K9 unit because he's holding an attack Dalmatian dog on a leash. If you look closely at the dog, you can see that it has a liver spot and a cancer hope ribbon near its neck. Together, these ideas should help you remember that aflatoxins are associated with hepatocellular carcinoma. All right, let's finish up by discussing allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, or APBA. Everything regarding this idea will be around the soldier sneezing right in this area. You can see that we've shown a soldier covering his mouth while sneezing underneath a helicopter. He must be allergic to those tubers behind him. Anyway, the reference of allergies near the asparagus jungle should make you think of allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Also notice that the same soldier has an inhaler in his hand, which should make you think of asthmatics. Finally, you can see a second soldier that's carrying a bag of salt to help make a protective barricade for these soldiers. If you look closely, you can see that the bag is labeled CF. The reference to salt and CF should make you think of cystic fibrosis. So all of these ideas together are here to help you remember that allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis is a hypersensitivity response that occurs when the fungus colonizes the bronchial mucosa of asthmatic or CF patients. Now we've added a third soldier sitting on some salt bags and he appears to be passing the time by hollowing out a wooden musical instrument. If we zoom up, you can see this a bit better. The hollow tube represents the airways of the lungs. The fact that he's scraping it with a knife should make you think of scarring. Finally, the fact that it's a hard piece of wood should make you think of hard fibrotic lungs. So putting all these ideas together should make you think of bronchiectasis, which is a lung condition characterized by chronic scarring that results in thickened fibrotic lung tissue and obstruction of the airways. So allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis may cause bronchiectasis. All right, finally notice that the helicopter is leaving behind little bits of red debris that are landing on top of this area. The debris is red and circular, just like eosinophils and is here to help you remember that allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis is associated with eosinophilia. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 59-year-old male is brought to the emergency department due to a cough and bloody sputum. He states that he has had a cough for the past few days, but only noticed the blood this morning. He has a history of tuberculosis that was successfully treated several years ago. He denies recent night sweats, fevers, or weight loss. Imaging is obtained and shown below. This patient's condition is most likely caused by which of the following? A, a hypersensitivity reaction, B, reactivation of a latent organism, C, invasive fungal disease involving the vasculature, D, fungal colonization of a prior lesion, or E, pulmonary invasion by neoplastic cells. Okay, hopefully from the question stem you notice that this patient has had a cough, hemoptysis, or bloody sputum, and a history of TB. Also, his imaging has shown an aspergilloma, which we can see right here. So with this in mind, the correct answer is D, fungal colonization of a prior lesion 
which is describing an aspergilloma. From the image, recall that the ball of asparagus right here is here to help you remember that aspergillus can cause aspergillomas. The cavity in the ground and tubers should help you remember that it's due to fungal colonization of old lung cavities, which typically form after a TB infection. A is describing allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, or ABPA. However, this is seen in asthmatics and patients with a history of cystic fibrosis, and it typically presents like an asthma exacerbation. So the patient would have a cough, shortness of breath, and possibly wheezing. This patient doesn't have shortness of breath or wheezing, and imaging suggests an aspergilloma. So A is incorrect. B is describing reactivation TB. However, this presents with night sweats, fevers, and weight loss, which this patient does not have. Remember from the question stem, it says he denies recent night sweats, fevers, or weight loss. So B is incorrect. C is describing invasive aspergillosis. From the image, recall that all of the information near the explosion and the guy in the stretcher right here represents invasive aspergillosis. It's super important that you make note of this and that you are able to distinguish this from a patient with an aspergilloma because they can present very similar to one another. As you hopefully recall from the image, invasive aspergillosis presents in severely neutropenic and immunocompromised patients and presents with a cough, hemoptysis, fevers, and chest pain. This patient is not immunocompromised and doesn't have fevers or chest pain, so C is incorrect. Finally, E is describing cancer, which can present with hemoptysis sometimes. However, a history of TB and the imaging makes an aspergilloma much more likely, so E is incorrect. So again, the correct answer is D, fungal colonization of a prior lesion. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about aspergillus fumigatus.